Welcome to Chapter 9, Working with Subtools. So what are subtools? Well, what they are are separate pieces of geometry that are making up a whole sculpt. So in this case, we have our demo soldier. And you can see, besides just the body, there's things like goggles, knee pads, boots, there's a backpack. And so each one of these are individual subtools. And we know this by an indicator within the tool palette. So if we go to the tool palette, you can see our demo soldier is selected. You can see in the top left there's a number 11. That's telling us that there are 11 subtools with this demo soldier. So I'm going to open up the subtool menu here, and you can see that each one of the pieces ha are their own subtool. So our glove is its own subtool, which you can see right here. The, the vest and the goggles, their own subtool. So we can select our subtools two different ways. We can either just tap on any one of the subtools. You'll notice that when we have a selected subtool, that's the brighter subtool inside of our document where everything else gets a little more dark. That's a visual indicator to you so you know what subtool you're working on. We can also hold the Alt key and tap on any subtool that we want to work on. So you can see I tapped on the glove here and it automatically moved to the glove in the subtool list. So if I want to work on my goggles, I tap and now you can see we automatically switch to the goggles. So you can use this little orange slider here to move up and down your subtools as well and take a look at what you have. But let's also look at why we might want to separate items and be their own subtool. So in this case, we're looking at the goggles. And maybe I've decided, you know what? I want to change the shape of the goggles a little bit. So the benefit here is they're their own subtool, their own mesh, or almost their own sculpt. So I'm able to adjust things. So I got the move brush selected. Let's take a look and see if we have some subdivision levels. We do. So you can see this is sitting at level three. If you remember from chapter eight, talking about subdivision levels, it's easier and more efficient for us to walk down to a lower level to make big changes. So I'm going to make a larger draw size here. So I hit the S key to pull up my draw size. And then maybe I just want to make sure I have symmetry on, which I do, and start maybe moving this around and say maybe this comes up a little bit higher now. Maybe there's a little design element here that I want to change up. Or maybe the goggles come off his face a little bit more like this. So you can see by having the goggles as their own subtool, I can really make several adjustments and I'm not affecting the face. I can even put the goggles inside the face and pull them out. Right? So having subtools really gives us the benefit have separate subdivision levels for each piece of geometry and allow us to get different detailing on each piece of geometry. So let's take a look at how maybe we could make a subtool for ourselves. So this particular demo soldier was made from using the extract option for many of his pieces. So in the subtool menu, we have an extract option down here. So I'm just going to open that menu up. I want to hide everything but the body because I want to make maybe a new shirt for him. So I'm going to tap on the body and we now need to hide everything. So of course we can sit here and turn off these eyeballs one at a time. But there is a quick way to do this within the ZBrush core. So because this is the selected subtool, all we have to do is tap on that eyeball. And you can see that every other eyeball is automatically turned off. So all we're left with is the body of our soldier. So that is one way to do it. The other way would be using our solo option to the right of the document. So I'm going to tap that. And you can see that hides everything else but the body, even though the eyeballs are still on. So there, there are two ways to do this. I'm going to stick with the eyeball way. So I'm going to turn that off. So all we're left with is the body. And I want to make a nice new shirt. So all we have to do for this is use our masking option. So I'm holding down that control key and I'm beginning to mask out. Now you'll notice the mask quality isn't the most defined. That's because masking is dependent upon the number of polygons we have. So you can see we're sitting at 32,000. So why don't we go ahead and add some subdivision levels. So I'm just going to use our shortcuts. So Control-D adds another level. Control-D adds another level. 
So you see now we're sitting at 520,000 polygons. Let's take a look at what our mask looks like now. So you can see there's a little more definition to our mask. So let's really quickly make some kind of shirt for him. You're going to notice when we get to the arms, we have a problem. It's really difficult to get underneath the arms because they're in the way. So if you remember in chapter 6, we discussed selection brushes. Here's a prime example of how beneficial they can be. So I'm going to hold down that control and shift key. I have my select lasso brush as my selected brush. I'm going to just begin to draw out my selection bubble. Now again, I don't need to be holding the control and shift key right now, which is key, because now I want to hold the alt key and turn my bubble into a, a red selection, which when I let go of everything, that hides the arms. So now I can come in here and really get closer to where I want to be. Now, by default, ZBrush is only showing the faces or the polygons that are facing the camera. So if I really want to make sure this selection process, I want to see what I've selected out and what I haven't selected out. Because you'll notice as we rotate, it looks like polygons are disappearing and, and reappearing. It's really only because the camera is only showing the ones that are facing it. So I'm going to scroll down here to the very bottom of our menu. And I'm going to open up Display Properties. I'm going to turn on this double option, and now you can see no matter where I rotate, I always see the mesh. You can say, you know what, I want to hide more of this, so I'm going to do my selection, Control, Shift, and now I'm only holding the Alt key and letting go. Now I've hid more, because all I'm really concerned about is getting maybe that close to the arm, and I'm going to unmask that. Again, unmasking is Control and Alt. Okay, and I'm going to say, you know what, let's bring the shirt to come down a little bit more like like this. That's a little too far. Maybe something like that. So we've got a nice little new tank top happening here for our demo soldier. So to bring everything back, I'm holding on the control and shift, and I'm just tapping anywhere in the document. So now what we can do is open that subtool menu and then hit this extract button. So I'm going to tap that extract button, and you can see a mesh is instantly made from our mask. Now, if I rotate, you'll see it disappear. This is because you're going to want to adjust maybe some settings here. So if I hit extract, you can see how thick it is. Maybe that's too thick. So there's a thickness slider here. So maybe I want to go a little bit lower. Maybe let's try 0 0.01 since we're at 0 0.02. Let's hit extract. Yeah, that's a lot better. I like that thickness. Okay. And then the other slider that becomes important is our smoothness. So that's this slider right here. If I turn this down to zero and hit extract, you can see how rough the edging is here. If I turn this back up, or even let's go to 10 and hit extract, you can see how much more smooth that edge is getting. And then if I'm happy with this, I now hit accept. But before we do that, the other options here are just options if we want double-sided. So we want a double-sided surface. Do we want to have um, corners to have triangles? So we convert quads to triangles along the corners. And then our border edge, how thin do we want that geometry to be? So if I hit accept, we actually now have made a new subtool, which is automatically populated right below our body. And then now we can select that, and you can see what we're left with. You can even see we have a little piece here that I probably don't want. So here's a great advantage to selection brushes. I'm going to hold down that control shift. I'm going to click out and drag. I'm going to hold now just the alt key. So I've let go of that control and shift. Reminder that the pen never comes off my Cintiq or tablet. I let go. Now that little piece is hidden. Oh, I didn't get the other side because I didn't have symmetry on. So we'll do that side. And now what I can do is tell ZBrush, you know what? I don't even want that at all. Let's delete what's hidden right now. So I'm going to close subtool. I'm going to open up our tool geometry, and I'm going to open up modified topology, and you'll see there's a delete hidden button right here. So I'm going to click that, and now that little piece is gone. So it is actually deleted away from the mesh, and all I'm left with now is this cool little new shirt that I've made. You can see that there's a mask, so I'm going to hold down control, click and drag, and clear a mask, and voila, we have a new subtool. So I'm going to turn the body on again. And you can see how that 
shirt's going to work on his body. And if I want to see with other pieces, now I can turn on my backpack, maybe turn that shoulder pad back on, uh, and his waistband. You can even see that the waistband is now not fitting quite right, so we can select that. I'm going to switch to the move brush, and I'm just going to start moving out so that fits better on the waist. And what's great about the move brush is if I hold the Alt key, we can move along the normal of the face of our polygon. So, And then this is the only selected sub-tool, so we're only affecting that band. That's the basics of how to create a sub-tool and what exactly are sub-tools. So in Chapter 10, we're going to look at how can we start moving these sub-tools around in space and move them in totally different locations. So we look forward to seeing you in that chapter. Thank you for watching. Happy New